Hawkins, and we're the Hawking Adventure Bus. My name's Jim, this is my lovely wife, Kara, my 12-year-old daughter, Amaya, my 10-year-old son, Beckett, my seven-year-old son, Stellan, and our four-year-old son, Hendrix. We also have a cat named Gemma, and the newest member of our family, Denali, joined us yesterday. Let's go check out the bus. People are living a different lifestyle out here. People are building these beautiful buses and traveling to places, and it's not a one-year adventure. They're doing this as their lifestyle, and they're choosing to do this. We always say our biggest regret now, actually, is that we didn't do it sooner. So you can look at the bottom two, but you can't look at the top two, because that's the mystery. Jack is 10, and... She's Yeah. Game over, let's see who won. <laughs> we didn't get that far. Right. What if we could, you know, buy an RV and just go drive around and see all these things and get to do what we're doing now, but everywhere, right? So that was kind of where the conversation started. So we really started to look into, um, you know, can we do this lifestyle? and. Uh, and then um, Kara, uh, we found out Kara was pregnant with our with our fourth child, Hendrix. So we went from kind of discussing it and thinking about doing it to completely doing a 180. Uh, we decided to build our dream house. Um, we we worked to get into that before Hendrix was born, and then we moved into our dream house in our hometown, and we and we and we kind of started kept living life. And uh, it wasn't until about probably two years after that that we were sitting there one day, you know, and we were just we just felt like we weren't happy, I guess, and we said, let's revisit this idea maybe we should look into it again and look into RVs and stuff again. And about that time, you started looking at schoolies, I guess. And I guess, you know, what you can yeah. take it from here. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, it was just, um, yeah, we had this house, this beautiful house. I was the general contractor on the house. It was everything we wanted or thought that we wanted at the time. And all of a sudden came to this realization that isn't what we wanted at all. Um, it was time with our family that mattered. Jim was working a lot and we were working so hard to pay our mortgage and our bills and didn't have the chance to enjoy life. So, and I traveled a lot too. So I was away yes. from a lot of things a lot um, in different places. And I just, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like missing out on things with our kids. And um, as the years went on and our kids started, started getting older, it started to become even more important to us. So yeah, as our kids were getting older, I just, um, I felt like we needed to do something different. And we started to regret that five years ago, we didn't make that move and we didn't hit the road. Um, we had a wonderful fourth child, so we can't complain. But now we see families honestly out doing this with babies and having babies in their bus. So yeah. we could have done it. And we always say our biggest regret now actually is that we didn't do it sooner, that we didn't do it so. sooner. <laughs> um, so fast forward, we started talking about this. And in the beginning, it was all about an RV and taking a one year trip across the United States. And I'm honestly not sure where the idea of a schoolie came across. I'm gonna guess social media, YouTube, Facebook. Um, but that, I guess, changed my whole mindset on things. And we started realizing that people are living a different lifestyle out here. People are building these beautiful buses and traveling to places. And it's not a one-year adventure. They're doing this as their lifestyle and they're choosing to do this. So I became fascinated with it. When you start looking at how do you get four kids, two adults? Um, we had a cat at the time, now we have a dog. How do you make that work on the road? And an RV wasn't a good fit for us to have, it was important for us for our kids to have our own space. And um, this just seemed like the best for, for us. We wanted to be able to boondock and be off grid. Um, we liked the safety of a bus. We knew they were heavy and they were durable and they hauled you know, children, which is like the most precious thing on earth, right? So we knew, we wanted one, but we also, as we looked more and decided, can we build it? One, we didn't we didn't think we had the time to build it. And two, we were struggling to find one to take to build. So we actually were really interested in the schoolie. Then we started pulling away and saying, maybe we just can't do it. Now's not the time. It's more important that we get on the road and do this trip. And then, uh, uh, you know, I think it was last the, the last week of February of 2021, at about six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, she elbows me and wakes me up and she goes, Jim, What'd you say? <laughs> I think I found our bus. Yes. Um, literally, we had looked for a year and I we had given up a month before. And I remember Jim like sitting us down and like saying a prayer and saying like, if this is meant to be, it's meant to be and it's going to work out. So 
don't worry about it. And literally a month later, um, we had been watching and this bus pops up online. And for us at the time, our important factors we were looking at was off grid off grid capability so that we can boondock and we didn't have to stay at campgrounds because that makes it a lot more affordable for us. We wanted a lot of solar power and water storage. So when this bus checked literally all of those boxes, it had 3,150 watts of solar, 200 gallons of fresh water. We had four bunk beds, washer, dryer, all these things. It was like, we can do this. Like we can make it work. And the only thing I didn't love about the bus at the time was the decor. Um, it was blue. And in my head, I was thinking, I can make this work. Um, you know, this is our out and we can we can make it work and figure it out. I can get over the blue and we can live that way, um, which we ended up remodeling it and making yeah. it our own. But we knew we could make it more of our home with, yes. you know, the cosmetics. But the, the foundation of all that, all those off-grid capabilities were there. And that's where I like, we, we can't pass this offer up. This is everything we need. Yeah. And it's going to get us on the road at least a year faster than if we would have built the bus on our own. And we we didn't have the time. Our daughter's 12. We thought if we waited another year, she would, she'd be out on the trip. So we said, let's go. We, we bought tickets. We need to do it now. Yeah. yeah. So we literally called the family immediately, texted them, emailed them. And by the end of the day, we had more videos, pictures, and we honestly signed a bill of sale that day um, without seeing the bus because we were ready to take that leap of faith and it felt crazy, but it also felt right. And it yep. was our opportunity um, all of a sudden to do that. So yeah, we talked to the family, figured out a way. We bought tickets um, to Salt Lake City and Jim and I both flew out there, left our kids back at home with one of our awesome neighbors. And yeah, we took a big trip and ended up driving the bus home um, from Salt Lake City to Iowa. So we actually have a YouTube video about that whole trip home, which is pretty cool. But. Yeah, it was definitely an adventure. We weren't experienced with the bus. I had never driven a bus. We didn't really know what we were doing, um, but Not we all, got scary. in the bus and we <laughs> drove it right up the Rocky Mountains and across Wyoming and across Nebraska and home. And I mean, I guess uh, training as you go whatever they call that that, that it worked out because by the time we were done we were and as we went we got a lot more comfortable it was just interesting we had no experience luckily the bus made it all the way back to iowa without issue which you know the more you learn about the bus you know thank, thank god that happened because you yeah. know buses you know they think the things we did to that bus on the drive there on the drive home are things we know not to do now so it was just it was interesting we had no idea what we were doing but we've learned as we went so so one of the things that people always comment on is the fact that I have this co-captain chair here. I don't think a lot of people honestly have them in the bus, but for us on travel day, it has been great. I sit up here, usually work on my laptop, hang out. Kids sometimes come up here and want to steal my chair, but we can also utilize this chair when we're hanging out in the bus at night. Sometimes the kids will come over here, read a book, get on their iPad eat dinner over here, alone time. It's just a separate little space. So it's nice just from a safety perspective and the fact that I have my own chair. I've got my own little cup holder over here, which is pretty slick um, on travel day. So um, I'm probably too close to Jim because I'm always in his ear on travel day telling him to watch out for the cliffs when we're driving over mountains or slow down or, hey, did you see the sign that this pass is coming or this grade is coming? Um, but he hasn't kicked me out yet, so I guess that's okay. Um, so over here, water. So one of the things that we were trying to figure out is how do we have safe drinking water on the road? Some people put in these fancy systems. Our bus didn't have that, and so we came across the Berkey water filter. We have the four and a half gallon, which as a family of six has been great. We can go through four and a half gallons in a day pretty easy. So we take our tap water, fill up the Berkey system and then that is fresh water that we safe drinking water. Supposedly you can fill this thing up with pond water in an emergency and get safe drinking water. So we just love the flexibility that it has for us. So it's been great. Um, double farm sink is another thing. So we actually in our house back home had a big one open um, farm sink. And so now we have the divider in it, but it's been great when you're on the road living on a bus there's no dishwasher um so that's been one of the challenges we love to cook we love food 
and we're constantly doing dishes. So you have to think that you're gonna have stacks of dishes all the time. So unfortunately, yes, we get stacked up dishes, but it's nice that we can contain them to one side or the other. So I actually really enjoy the fact that we have the separator in the middle and have the two separate sinks here. Soap dispensers, um, anything that doesn't have to sit on the counter on travel day, I feel like is just one of those little perks. So the little soap dispenser works out great for us. So Gemma's Grubhub, but Gemma's Grubhub is gonna have to change because now we have a dog. So I haven't figured this out yet, but um, this has been pretty slick for us. We now have switched this over that we have dog food and cat food in it, but it's just nice that everybody has their own designated space and a safe place to keep that when we travel. So appliances. So we have a big solar system. People are always amazed at the things that we run, but we have 3,150 watts on the roof and we don't have a microwave, um, which was one thing when we bought this bus, we questioned the fact that there's no microwave and that's all we knew was a microwave at home and we used it a lot to reheat food, but when you're running off solar, it pulls a lot of power. And so we've just made the adjustment and we use the toaster a lot. We use the instant pot and we use our oven. So for the space that it would take up and the power it would use, I'm completely fine not using a microwave. So when we bought this bus, everything in this, all the cabinets in this bus were painted blue. Blue is honestly probably my least favorite color. If I was gonna pick a cabinet color, we had white cabinets at home and even though they're a pain to keep clean, I just felt like they really brightened up the space when we did the white cabinets. So we had the same painter that painted our house come in and do all these cabinets for us. This was about two weeks before we were hitting the road full time. So we didn't have a lot of time at that point. So. We also, another change we made to this bus was the curtain rods. Um, they had those Ikea ones that you like latch over, but they were drooping. And so we took copper pipe that we had at one of our rentals, spray painted it gold and used basically the copper pipe attachments that you find at the hardware store and then had curtains made also because those were blue. So we had these curtains made that are blackout curtains, have a little bit of insulation, so it does help on hot or cold days when we keep those shut. So another thing that we did in this bus, so when we got the bus, the cushions here were all vinyl, just like they are now, but they were a blue color. And so we ordered marine vinyl, which is a very heavy duty, easy to clean, easy to, I mean, they've just been great, honestly. I feel like I can replace these two if they get ruined. So that's always a good feeling that with kids and pets, knowing that we can easily replace cushion covers if we need to. So the table here is probably one of our favorite things in the bus, honestly. Um, they originally put in a table here that matched the countertops and we decided to change this out. So in our house that we had, we had our neighbor build us this beautiful custom barnwood table about a month before we sold our house. So it was something we looked forward to doing and we wanted to bring that feel into the bus. So we asked him if he would be able to recreate that table in our bus using that same barn wood. And so he was awesome and he got it done just before we left and we swapped it out. So now this table actually has the RV legs on it where you can take it and take those legs off and drop it down and this makes into a large couch or bed or whatever we want to use it for. So movie nights we spend hanging out here. Um, but in all honesty, we have kept the table up more than we thought we would. The kids do school here. They play arts and crafts. They paint. They make bracelets. We play card games. We eat dinner here. So. This has just been a great entertaining space for us and it's great we can all sit down as a family of six and all be together. I think this is something we probably get the most comments on is the fact that we have a full size washer and dryer in their bus. So when we got the bus, we talked about maybe getting rid of these because we didn't want to use all of the space for a washer and dryer. We could have got a combo unit, but after a trip to Texas, we quickly realized that it is so convenient to have laundry on board. We don't have to go to a laundromat. In six months on the road, we've never been to a laundromat. We do all of our laundry here on the bus. 99% of the time we're boondocking off grid. 
So we have 200 gallons of water and we do our best to conserve. So we may get water, I'd say every 10 days or so. Um, but we do, if we go to a campground then we'll and we have full hookups, then we'll utilize as much as we can and do our laundry. But other than that, I say we do probably a load or two every week, probably a little less than we did at home. Um, but yes, it's been honestly great and I can't imagine not having laundry on our bus. So one of my favorite parts of the bus is just how we incorporated this barn wood. So crazy story, I was a photographer and probably 10 years ago barn wood was really big and so I bought the whole barn. <laughs> Um, literally bought all the barn wood off of a barn. We stacked it in our house and we used it in the house that we built. And so we had a lot of that left over. And we wanted to find a way to incorporate that into our bus build and make it feel like home. So we just added this barn wood header here and before we put the shelves on and I don't know, it just makes it feel like home along with the barn wood table. So just that rustic feel that we enjoy. All right, so this is our sliding pantry, um, which is great for mason jars. So we do a lot of rice and beans and pretty basic foods, um, nuts, flaxseed, and we store them all in these mason jars. So this honestly, it's a great place to store glass because it's not rattling when you're going down the road. It's heavy and it's all secured. So this has really provided us with a lot of storage on the road. All right, so this is our shower. It looks not nearly as amazing as our shower at home, but it serves the same purpose and it works just fine. So we have the Nebbia shower head and I feel like it gives us plenty of water pressure and it doesn't suck down all of our water. So I feel like it's been great for us. We also like that the builders put in these dispensers for body wash, shampoo and conditioner. Even though you can see everybody has their own preferences and now we've had to add on and they're using the shelf too. But um, my little organizer shelf here too. Um, we all have our loofahs perfectly lined up here. It's just, for me, everything's about organization in a small space. Everything has to have a place or it doesn't stay there. So our shower curtain is pretty slick in the fact that it tucks away and it bends in when we're not using it. But then when you take a shower, it pulls out and gives you just that much space. So it feels plenty big. Jim takes a shower in there. Honestly, we all use this. I would rather use this than a campground shower or public space. So it's been great. All right, so one of the things that we really like about this bus and was important for us was to have separate shower and separate toilet. toilet because when there's so many people in a bus, we don't want to be fighting over different things. So for us, we have the composting toilet and then the nature's head composting toilet. And then we have the half sink in here, which has been perfect. Um, we brush our teeth in here and I feel like if the kids were brushing their teeth in the sink, it would drive me crazy. So I'm so happy. It's a tiny little sink, but we brush teeth and we wash hands in there. And so it's been great. There's also a lot of added storage in this bathroom. I added toothbrush holders for everybody. Again, just the fact of if you have a space for it, then everything stays nice and organized for us. So one of the things we love about this is that each kid has their own bunk bed. They each have their own curtain, their own space, and it feels like a private area. We have the expectation, the kids have the expectation that when their curtain is closed, that is like your door is closed. And so everybody knows you just don't go barging in the curtain. So even though it's only a curtain, it's a door and everybody kind of respects that. So it's worked really well. So you can see they slide their curtains over and they have their nice little private space here. They also have cubbies in there. Um, so they keep all of their personal stuff. They keep some books in there, trophies, Legos, stuffed animals, books, all sorts of their stuff. So when we downsize from our house, they knew what they had to work within and it was their responsibility to figure out how they were gonna get what they wanted to bring into their space. So it's actually worked out great. We have a lot less stuff and that's a lot less to clean up too. So I love it. All right, welcome to our bedroom. So when we thought about building our own bus, we talked about putting in a king size mattress because we loved our bed at home. But it didn't happen so this bus had a queen size bed and we just dealt with it but 
honestly, it's been great. It's all we need. We even have a four-year-old that's in our bed most nights crawling in here, but this is our cozy space. This just feels so awesome to come in here and lay down. The kids hang out in here, honestly, and play, but yeah, it just feels like a cozy little space and it's everything we need. So we have, Jim and I each have our own side for storing our clothes. So this whole side over here is my storage under here and then Jim's side is over there. So we have plenty of space for our clothes. All my clothes go on this side and yes, I had to downsize and yes, I got rid of a lot of things, but I really don't care to be honest. So we live so simple, we don't need as much and yeah, we're totally fine with it, so. So this here is our bus, Fab, uh, the Hawking Adventure bus. So our bus is a 2005 Thomas school bus with a Cat 7 engine. It's got about 183,000 miles on it when we bought it. And again, when we bought it, it was already converted. It's ran great for us for the most part, and uh, we love it. So if you think about the inside of our bus as our house, the undercarriage of our bus is our garage, basically. So everything that we used to have in our garage basically is, is outside this bus. So we're from Iowa and being from Iowa, one of the things that was really important to us was we want to be outside and we, and we were stuck inside several months out of the year because it was winter, because it was cold. And when we decided to take this trip, we said, we got to be outside, that's our goal. So one of the things we love about this bus is it's outdoor space for cooking. So this under storage here, not only does it, uh, you know, hold our tools, it's got our inverter in it, it's got our battery, um, our batteries all in there for a solar, our electrical box and everything is here, but it also serves as a, uh, as a table. So, so what I do here is I can put this one up, um, this one I can put up as well. Under this one houses our, uh, our gray water tank, so there's really nothing under there, but the table will pop up. So what's nice is I can get our grill out here and I can be cooking dinner and I could have a, a serving area or other things sitting here. So we hang out a lot out here at night. We grill out a lot at night while we're outside. And I just love that we can be able to cook and eat and everything right outside of the bus. So uh, I'll just show you real quick, real quick how, to, how we hook up our, our grill here. So we just have this little uh, monument grill that came, that came with it and we ran a propane line. So once I get this out and hook it up, I just have to run the hose back down through the bus here and it hooks into a fitting right here. And then uh, once I flip this switch, um, we got propane and I just got to turn the grill on and we got a gas grill here. So again, uh, very easy to, to set up and take down and uh, we do a, a lot of our cooking out here. This is where our gray water tank is. So. Um, it's really not used for much. It, it stores that, it's perfect. And uh, again, we can set this table up when we need to. So so under, under here as well is where we have all of our solar set up. So we have a 6,000 watt inverter. Um, we actually have 3,150 watts of solar on the top. So if you look at the top of our bus, it's basically completely covered in solar panels, which is again what we wanted because we wanted to make sure that we were fully off grid and that we didn't have to worry about running out of power. So this inverter, um, more than does the trick, does the job for us. And then behind the inverter, we have four, uh, 200 amp hour uh, 12 volt batteries that's um, wired into a 48 volt system. So uh, we have plenty of power and it works great for us. Okay, so coming around to the back of the bus. So one of the questions we always get asked that we haven't covered yet is how do we heat and cool our bus? So one of the ways we do this is through our mini split that's hooked up in here to the back. So um, this will, it'll not only heat, but it'll also cool and it runs completely off of solar. It's a pioneer uh, mini split system. So that's one of the ways we heat and cool the bus. It does a really good job of keeping the back of the bus, um, pretty much the bedroom's back, very cool or warm, depending on what we need. We also have a propane heater in the front of the bus that keeps the bus warm um, for us, you know, when it's, when it's cold around in the front of the bus. But at night when we're going to sleep, we usually shut that off and rarely do we actually run the mini split. We try to stay in fair weather where we're not having to turn it on for heat or for cooling. And so it's worked out pretty well for us. But when we do need it, we can turn it on and, it, and, it, and it'll help keep us cool or warm. Back of the bus is a little dirty. We're out in the desert right now, but uh, we have a diesel pusher. So if you pop the hood here, this is where the engine is and all the components. So again, we got a Cat 7 engine. If we need to work on it or check anything, we just pop the, pop the back here and we can check it all out. All right, so coming down the side of the bus. So first, this is where our bus batteries are housed right here. So you can open up and pull out our bus batteries. Coming down here, when we do need shore power, which is very rare, we can plug in right here if we need to. We've only had, I think, a couple of times on the road where it's either been raining or we've been in trees and we've actually needed to hook up to electricity. But when we need it, we got it. If We got it, so it's a good backup for us, especially if we're in cloudy areas. Um, then underneath, this is kind of the back of the under storage. So um, this goes all the way through to the other side. And, and back here is kind of where we store 
like our chairs, our table, our rug for, for our bus. We have a lot of the kids' store, outdoor toys in here, so all their sports things that they used to have, and uh, sand toys, swimming stuff as well. So again, it all fits in pretty well. Um, it's full, but it does a trick, so. So, so far, where have we gone in this bus? So it has taken us from Iowa, starting in Iowa, we've gone across 14 states now. We've driven it about 10,000 miles. I think we, a combination of national parks, we've been to 14 national parks, but if you combine the state parks and county parks and national forest land we've been into, in six months, we've been to over 40 parks and we've had 64 different backyards. So this place is, or this bus has been, uh, has been working pretty hard the last few months. Um, yeah, so we brought the bus home. At that time in our head, it was, this is a one year, or this, this wasn't even a one year. This was, we hope that this is where we're heading, right? Yeah, and we want to take a trip. If we get this bus, we, we really, this is, I mean, this is the big step. This is a big jump. Once we have the bus, we kind of knew we were going to take the trip. But and we talked to the kids about that. Yeah. Um, that was a big thing, was talking to our kids and making sure they were on board. And we said, you know, if we buy this trip, we're looking at taking this cool trip across the United States for the next year and exploring national parks and getting outside and seeing those places that if we weren't doing this lifestyle and traveling this way, we could never afford to do it. Yeah. So. And by the way, if, you, if, you, if, if the kids are okay with it, right? By the way, we're also to afford the ability to do this trip and to, and to spend the time we want to spend. We're selling it all. We're selling our house. We're selling our. We're selling our vehicles. We're selling our things. We're gonna live in this bus, and we're gonna. We're we're gonna get rid of all this stuff because this stuff didn't make us happy, and we're going to use this as a vehicle to go spend more time as a family, see the things we want to see, and really just maximize, you know, maximize our time as a family, which is really what we wanted to do to begin with. So. Yeah, so we got the bus. Um, we took a trip to Texas, a little trial run, and honestly, we had a blast. We looked at it. We packed for that trip and looked around and thought. What else do we really need in here? We had the essentials, we had the basics. Um, we don't need things. We can live a simple life. The Our playground is the outdoors and the national parks that we get to go to. So yep. um, from there, yeah, we went ahead and we listed our house for sale, sold it that day, and we haven't looked back. Yeah. It's been- We spent three months getting rid of everything we owned and as stressful as it was, it was also really freeing, right? We kept talking yeah. about, it feels great to just get rid of our stuff. People were, they almost felt sorry for us. They're like, oh, what's, are you, you must be so sad. We're like, no, actually you should try it. It's amazing more. And uh, after all that stress of selling it all and we, it just kind of worked out the timing. We finished everything up about the week, the weekend before we left pretty much. Yeah. And then and we, we drove off probably a month, I would say, after the Texas trip, making this our own. So we made modifications, we painted, we did a new table, new curtains, curtain rods, and all these things to make it feel like our house. And yep. now we've been on the road for six months. We just had our six month celebration um, and it's been great. Yep, Right. and again, just yeah. wish we would have did it sooner, but the cool thing is, uh, we're just getting started. We have a lot more to see and we can't wait to do it. And it's the avenue we use to do it and it's great and we love it, but really it's not about the bus for us. It's about the journey with our family to see everything. And that's what is, uh, that's what's making us really happy right now. We're as happy as we've ever been. Our kids are happy and it's just great seeing all the great, all the awesome things in the country that we didn't even know existed before. So yeah, no, it's been great. We've met a lot of people. We've met a lot of families. It's a great community, um, the school aid community. And I think it's a good message to people that, you know, we always see people building their own buses and it is so cool and I'm jealous of what they've done. We did the complete opposite. Um, I feel bad sometimes that we didn't do our build, but it was the right answer for us. And I think it's an answer for other people. And there's options. There's people out there selling these or there's builders that will build this bus for you. Yep. So, And if you buy one, guess what? The community everybody knows what they're doing. There's so many people that built their own buses that can help you, that can provide resources for you. So as much as, as little as we knew when we took off on the bus, we're just, we're learning from the community. So it, it's been, it's been great. Yep. So. We love it. Yes, we do. <laughs>